salvation. Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. So the once saved, always saved, cheap grace peddlers, they can't, their lies won't fly where they say that if someone used to be a Christian and they've backslidden, it means they were never saved. No. Everyone who asks Jesus Christ to be saved will be saved. That's the beginning of your salvation. That salvation is important because any of us could die instantly, any second of any day from a heart attack, from a brain aneurysm. We can die from a, from a natural disaster in a car wreck. Anything can happen to us. We can be gone like that. And once that silver cord, which is our life, once that silver cord breaks, wherever we stand with Jesus Christ at that second, at that millisecond, is where we're going to spend our eternity, either in heaven or in hell. But after we, when we pray for salvation, we pray a prayer, we need to believe in our heart what we're praying, and speak it with our mouth what we're praying, and embrace Jesus Christ in our heart, and then we're saved. Now, once you're saved, you got a lot of things you need to do after you're, after you're saved. The thing that I recommend before anything else is once you get saved, is you get connected with a good church. And I know, I know that churches are hard to find. This is this is this is the really this is the crux of it for me. This is what's really difficult for me. To it just breaks my heart to see all the the people that want to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who are many times saved into a false salvation. They, they ask Jesus Christ to forgive them, and that's cool. They're saved then, but they get hooked up with a bad church, with a bad pastor, with bad Christians, and they lead them from that state of salvation down to hell. And the way that's done is, there's only one way to heaven, to God the Father, is through Jesus Christ, his Son. And there's only one way we can make sure that we do what we need to do to get to heaven. Unless, like I said, we die on our deathbed or, or a wreck or whatever. We're going to be in heaven if, we're, if we just got saved. But if we're living a life after we're saved, we need to pick up a Holy Bible. And to me, the King James Version Bible is the only Holy Bible that I'll read because it is the inspired Word of God. It's been around for since the 1600s and it gets the Bible true to form that we can understand. Now, <coughs> a lot of Christians will say, well, you know, I can't understand the King James Bible. It's like reading hieroglyphics. You know, it used to be that way for me too when I was backslidden. But once you're saved and once you pray to, to be to repent from your backslidden state and the hell goggles come off and you start seeing with Holy Spirit vision, King James Bible will be clear as a bell. And as a Christian, you need to read the King James Bible. That's the Bible the way it was written, okay? You need to believe that Bible, cover to cover. Genesis to Revelation, verse, chapter, book. All 60, 66 of them. Okay? You got to do it. That will give you all of your food that you need. It will give you everything that you need to make it to heaven. And anything that's not in there, you don't need. Anything that's not in those 66 chapters, you don't need, need to be thinking about it. Because it's not. if it's not biblical, it's not real to me. That's how I live my life. People ask me all the time. I have nine different ministries that the Lord has blessed me with. All for His power, man. And I get tired a lot of times, but... They belong to him. I'm just a slave who monitors, monitors them for him, but he gives me the strength that I need to make it through. But I get hundreds of questions all the time. People ask me about salvation questions. They ask me about Bible, you know, questions about, do I have to do this? Because they've heard it on somebody's video. I tell everybody, okay? Or they ask me, what's your religion? What's your, what's your religion, Paul Kid? I don't have a religion, okay? <laughs> like I said, my religion is the King James Version Bible, Genesis to Revelation, verse, chapter, book, all 66 books. That's what I believe. That's what I teach. That's what I tell anybody. I'm only going to give you a Bible answer if you ask me. If you ask me any question, I'm going to give you a biblical answer. I don't give you any other kind of answers just from the Bible. That's it. That's how I live. That's how I'm programmed. That's how the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit lives in my life down to the cellular level. He's down in my cell membranes. He runs, runs the show with me. That's how we have to get to be, my friends. Once you start reading that Bible, you'll find out. Like Getting back to church, you need to find a good church to worship. And the way you find out if that church is good or not... You bring your King James Bible with you to church, okay? Don't listen to what the church tells you. Don't read their big fancy things up on the screen. King James Bible, open it when, he, when the pastor comes out and says something. And if what he says doesn't match your Bible, if what he says is twisted around and it's changed, it's sliced and diced, it's chopped, it's mixed and matched, close that King James Bible, get up out of your seat, walk to the exit doors and leave, okay? Find a church that preaches that Bible cover to cover. There are so few here anymore that are real churches. So, so many people now are having to meet in homes where they have friends and neighbors who are devout Christians who, again, 
you bring your Bible and open that Bible, and as long as it's being teached out of the, that King James Bible the way it's written, you're good to go. Okay? The Holy Bible has been perverted so many times, and so many people will say, well, you know, Paul kid, uh, it doesn't have to be the King James Bible. Well, to me it does, because the rest of the, of the texts are watered down so much, and they're perverted, and the words are changed. The 2011 NIV has 65,000 words removed. Woo, 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 woo. The 2011 NIV has 65,000 words removed. The Bible is being perverted, polluted, chopped, watered down. The King James Version Bible is good to go. That's why I read. That's why I tell people to read that. Once you find somewhere to worship, be it a church or a home or a gymnasium or a movie theater that has services, wherever it is, you find that place to worship, okay, in the meantime, while you're finding that place to worship, start praying. And don't do a now I lay me down to sleep prayer. Talk to Jesus like we're talking right now. I've got a video on prayer and how to pray. Look it up, please. It breaks prayer down to the basic bare bones to the marrow. It'll give you a perfect idea of how to pray. You talk to Jesus like you talk to a friend because he, he's your best friend. You don't have to say some, you don't have to say, you don't, don't come out and say some kind of a robotic prayer that's the same thing. Talk to Jesus like, like he's your best friend because he is. Pick up that King James Bible and start reading. If you have questions, Get a concordance. A lot of times the Bible will have a concordance in it. It'll break it down and tell you what words you may not understand so you understand those. Okay? And get water baptized. Water baptism is a, a display that you show the world that when you go into the water, you're dead. The old you is dead. When you come out of the water, the new you is alive. You're showing the world that you are a child of the King. You've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and now you want to be water baptized. And then again, as you live your life for Jesus Christ, keep praying and keep living and ask to, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit from head to toe. That's very important also. And you can pray for gifts. There's so many gifts that God can give you the Spirit. It's all located in the Bible. That's why I say the Bible is the key, my friends. As a Christian, that King James Bible is your roadmap. It's what's going to save you. It's, not, it's, it's what's going to save you. You're already saved by Jesus' blood. That Bible is going to save your eternal life by showing you, feeding you the meat and potatoes, not the milk toast and the watered-down junk that the churches feed you. Because I'm going to tell you something, and I, I, I don't want you to feel bad as a young Christian. I live in what's known as one of the, if not the most, Christian city in all of this filthy nation. I can't find one church here that preaches the King James Bible the way it's written. I live in what's known as one of the, if not the most, Christian cities in this entire filthy nation. I can't find one church that preaches the King James Bible the way it's written. I can't find one church that preaches the Word of God of any kind the way it's written. It's pathetic. I've had to go online to find a church. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm heartbroken. So you've got to fight and, and work, my friends, and look. And I've been a Christian since I was eight years old. Now, I've, I was backslidden over half my life. I've, I've been up and down for the Lord so many times, like a yo-yo, like a seesaw. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed of that. I, you know, I have weeped and gnashed my teeth, and I've been very sorrowful. I've repented. Each time I've backslidden, Jesus has brought me back into the fold. He'll always do that. If you repent, he'll always bring you back into the fold. And now I'm on fire for him till, till the very end. I will never leave Jesus again. I will, I will fight for Jesus Christ, and I will lead people to his cross until the day I die, or the day I'm, I'm brought home in the rapture, whatever, it, whatever way it happens. But you've got to keep fighting, my friends. It's, it's a lifelong battle. It's not something that happens overnight. You know, salvation is from the beginning, from when you first pray that prayer to ask Jesus to forgive your sins, all the way until you die or until you took home in the rapture. Praise the Lord. You have to constantly be refining yourself like metal, like gold, like precious gold for Jesus Christ. And he'll do it. Surround yourself with Christian friends. Don't be hanging out with your bad friends that want to go to the club and want to go out drinking and want to go mess around with, with women and do drugs and stuff. You don't want that kind of stuff. Stay strong with Jesus Christ. Believe what the Holy Bible says. Remember the Ten Commandments. I don't care what the new preachers say that the Old Testament is irrelevant. It's a bunch of garbage. The Ten Commandments are still as relevant, relevant today as they were when they were written. Follow them. Now, we're not saved by works. You know, and this is something else, too, you have to understand. There's a cult out there right now, new Christians. It's called Once Saved, Always Saved. Or it's called uh, Cheap Grace. It has a lot of names. But what they try to teach is that when Jesus Christ died for our sins, he died for all of our sins, past, present, and future. That's a bunch of baloney. When Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross, he died for all of our sins, past and present, up to that moment only. After that, we have to pray and repent of sins. It's called repentance. Okay? There's just, I think there's hundreds of scriptures in the Bible 
that show this. And there you have it'll take months to find them all. So Google this name, Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R, -E and put OSAS or once saved, always saved next to it, or cheap grace, and then click enter. You'll pull up his site. Now I'm only endorsing Dan Corner's once saved, always saved link. He has a lot of other links. I'm not endorsing all of those. I'm just endorsing the once saved, always saved, because I'm not familiar with all of his stuff. But you'll find all those scriptures from the Bible all in one spot, and you can read them and you can embrace them and understand what the Bible really says. So when the one saved always saved tries to trick you and, and snatch you in their web, you can say, oh no, I don't, I've been told the truth. I, I'm sorry, I'm not believing your junk. Let me help you and tell you the truth if you want to hear it, okay? Because if you don't believe what the Bible says, that one saved always saved is a lie, then you call God a liar and you call the Holy Bible a book of lies. And then woe, woe, woe unto you, my friends. You'd never want to do that. So just be careful. There's so many false doctrines and it breaks my heart. There are very few doctrines that are true anymore. That's why I'm telling you, new Christians, open up the King James Bible, read it cover to cover. It will tell you the truth. It will show you the truth. It will set you free. Okay? In Jesus Christ. That's what you got to do. But you got to find Christian friends and you got to remember to do everything that I said to do. Prayer and reading the Bible is so important. So important. You know, when you get into a church, you know, you want to tithe 10% of your income to the church. And you want to make sure that if you're given to missions, that the missions at that church, missionaries, don't preach once saved, always saved. Don't preach prosperity doctrine or any of the lies. That they preach only what that Bible says. It's so confusing as a Christian right now, and it breaks my heart. The saddest thing that I can think of in life is a new Christian coming to Jesus Christ and being led to hell from that day on. It just breaks my heart. There's no excuse for it, and God is going to hammer people over that, over leading his flock to the devil. Shame on you guys. It's really hard, my friends, I know, but there's hope. There's people out there that love you and they will help you. I'm one of them. I've got friends that are out there too. You know, I've got a friend on YouTube named Sandy, you know, who preaches the Bible the way it's written. And her son, Adam, I started watching him today and he preaches the Bible the way it's written. There's people out there that would love to pray with you and talk to you and help you in your walk and lead you away from the liars. There's not a lot of us anymore, but there's still some of us and you have to just search out and find, unfortunately. It should be every church you go to, every church corner should have a church that preaches the Holy Bible cover to cover and teaches the ways of Jesus Christ, but it's not anymore because the Bible said in these last days the church would fall away from God, the great apostasy. It'd be hard to find. People would flock to those who preach what their itching ears want to hear. That's where we are, my friends, sadly. It's just so sad. I pray for you every day, and I'm going to give an altar call like I always do at the end of this video so you can pray, and I'll give you information about contacting me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you so much, and I thank you for everything you do for us. You're so wonderful. You're so precious. You're Godhood. You're the epitome of goodness. I just love you, and I just, I'm just i so saddened by the, the, the new Christians that are just led to hell by these evil false prophets and pastors and shepherds. Please guide and direct the new ones, Jesus, and, and lead them to people who will lead them, who won't lead them astray. Lead them to me and others who will just teach them the way that it is. Jesus, you lead so many to me and to and some of my friends, and I just thank you so much that we can point them to the right direction and always give them biblical answers for all their questions. Just help us, you just to, to maintain, to stand strong to the very end. In your precious name I ask it, amen. Okay, my friends, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please wash my heart, pure and holy, Jesus, white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. But again, that's the beginning. That's to make sure that you're eternally ready if something happens to you now, if you die like that, that you're ready. But afterwards, though, remember what I said. Find a good church. Read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Be baptized with water. Pray to be baptized with the Holy Spirit to receive gifts from God if he has them for you. To, to tithe to the church. To find good Christian friends. Avoid non-Christian friends unless you're going to witness to them. Witness to the non-Christians, but don't go with them to the clubs and to the parties and the filthy stuff. If you'd like me to pray for you anytime, I'm always available. Send me an inbox, a private message. I have a lot of ministries, like I said, but I'll always get back to you, I promise. If you have a friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker, anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick friend, family member, neighbor, co-worker, loved one, a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, anything, I'd like someone to pray with you, send me an inbox. I was given the gift of faith when I prayed for it. Nothing I did, God gave it to me. Praise the Lord. And I have mustard seed faith. And I'll pray for you every day, believing in my heart. And I'll speak with my mouth. And I know that God will answer all my prayers.
pray in his holy will. I love you guys. Share this video, this link with everybody you possibly can. I pray for you every day. May God bless you.